So if you've ever wondered what it actually looks like to own and operate and run a multi-million dollar Amazon business, you're probably gonna enjoy this video. I'm not gonna try and glamorize it, so you're gonna get a behind the scenes look at a normal day. So I'll show you um, how I work, so what I do, how much I have to work, where I work and, and routines and everything. Um, I'll show you my team, what that looks like, how many people there are, uh, who they are, what they do for me, and how I hide them as well. I'll show you the tools, the software, the procedures that I use to keep everything you know, running smoothly. And um, what else will I do? I'll also answer the most common questions I get about how I balance running this business, making all this money, doing all this stuff with traveling and doing all the other stuff that I wanna do. So it's about 8.30 in the morning on today is a Thursday and we've got a lovely background of St. George's in Grenada. Um, this is the estate that I'm staying at. It's an Airbnb apartment. I'm actually in an in like an attic loft apartment. So it's really beautiful, really nice. I always like to, whenever I can, I like to get places that are in nature. So you can hear the birds and everything. There is, um, you know, lots of insects at night. Actually, here is the first place that I've ever seen fireflies, which is freaking cool. So there's fireflies all in the trees. Um, it's really quite magical. So I started my morning routine, which is black coffee. I like to have a healthy smoothie with some protein powder, get like a, a quick fix. I don't eat much for breakfast in the mornings. I'll have like a, a second breakfast. But anyway, I get up, I do that. Um, and then the most important parts of the routine are mindset related. So at the moment I am reading the Daily Stoic, which has been one of the most impactful books um, that I've ever really read. And I'm actually, I'm actually a little bit out of date right now because I didn't have the book with me while I was back in Colombia. So I'm about a month behind catching up. But the reason why I mentioned that is because the morning routine I've discovered as I've started working for myself and, and particularly working independently is you need a routine that actually gives you the energy and gives you the motivation and the drive to be able to work um, and the clarity as well, sorry, to be able to work with focus. And then whatever's on my daily plan, which I set the night before, then I just immediately start that. Now I'm trying to put the most important things I always try and put the most important thing first. And that's why I'm filming this video in the morning because you know, for me, this is the most important thing for today. So I'm gonna go, let's go look at my workstation for a bit. Just so you know, this is, I mean, this is how you run a multi-million dollar business. I've got a Dell uh, XPS. I've, I used to just have this and, and a mouse and this crappy little mouse pad. But I think at the start of this year, I got this um, laptop stand because it raises the screen up. So for ergonomics, it's actually much better to be able to look with, with a straight neck. Little things like that will add up as you sort of, as you do them more often. Um, so yeah, I got the Bluetooth keyboard, the uh, laptop stand. It's a nice wireless uh, noise canceling headphones. These are Sony's. They're really good to cut out distractions. Uh, and then I'll sit down and I'm gonna start work. So let's dive into the computer and we'll talk about work routines, software, team management, all of that sort of stuff. So you're inside my workstation now. How did you get in here? So I'm just gonna go off my notes for this one. I haven't really planned this one out too much. So you know what my day looks like, what the workstation looks like from the outside. Um, internet, by the way, is definitely a problem when you're traveling or when, when I've been traveling, it's something that I need to always seek out. So here the internet's really fast. I use this little tool call, called networks just to see um, connection speeds. Dealing with distractions, talked about headphones. Um, these headphones are super, super good. And other than that, it's just tough to deal with distractions. What I've discovered is that your routine hugely depends, your performance, everything hugely depends on your environment. And when you're traveling while you work, your environment is changing. And so you have to be adaptable. And basically sometimes you just react to your environment. So right now it's really hot during the days. So I'm working like earlier in the mornings and also more at night. Now, normally I don't like working at night, but here it's much cooler, it's much nicer. So for me, it makes more sense to work at night. Um, so you just need to be adaptable. And that's what I found is, is the key is like, take advantage of the environment or, or the strengths of the environment and then try and minimize the, you know, the downsides of whatever environment is that you're in it. So let's talk about how much do I actually work? Um, and I track this down to the minute. So I'm just gonna show you exactly how much I've worked on my Amazon business. And it's, it's not much, I'm happy to say I am most of the time doing the four hour work week. Um, so I've worked two months this year where I had to actually sort of put in extra effort, but otherwise, you know, this, this is per month. So that's, that's less than one, four, sorry, that's less than four hours per week um, this month. Yeah, roughly the four hour work week, I'm pretty much doing it. Um, if you wanna see what I actually spend my time doing, you might be surprised. 
It is talking to my manager. It was ManyChat. So ManyChat was then and then was implementing ManyChat stuff. Um, task checkups. So that's really just going into the this software that I'll show you, Asana, and talking to my team about stuff and making sure that I'm mobilizing and managing the resources that I have in my business to get the stuff done that I need done without going over this sort of four hour work week that um, I happen to be maintaining at the moment. What else? Brand projects. So that's some um, brand stuff with the two brands that we have. Insert cards, something new, accounting. That's something that you know you have to deal more and more with stuff like that as you build a bigger business. Strategic vision. So that's planning. So that was earlier in the year. Um, labor plan. Not much. We're not really doing much with that. And basically, yeah. So that's that's sorted by duration. So that's really the bulk of of what I've been doing this year. Taxes, accounting. You get the idea. So I'm going to go away from that now. So yeah, basically it doesn't take much work to run a business of this scale. And so you've seen my office is literally just this old shitty wooden table um, and this little laptop with this little stand. And I do it from a loft or an attic if you want. So there's not that much that goes into a business of this scale. And that's sort of one of the points that I want to just make sure that you're aware of this, that it doesn't take that much effort to maintain. It doesn't take much overhead. I don't have a building full of employees to do this um, or a shop or anything like that. It's really quite low maintenance. Um, so let's talk about software and team management. So I used to do things when I, cause I used to be an engineer and I used to work in a, in a mining company, a pretty big mining company. And I used to just think that, you know, work was just stuff that you got via email and you talked about everything through email. And I can tell you now that if you're, using email to manage a team or to try and get work done. Like you're really setting yourself up for failure. So what you want to be using is task management software. So I use Asana and some sort of team communication software and I use Slack and both of these are free. So you don't have to pay anything for them. That's chatting and then use Asana for tasks. So when you have tasks that you need assigned, that's when you actually put it in some sort of software. You can use uh, what's some other ones, I think Trello, Basecamp, things like that. And the key things that you get out of this is that you assign it to someone and then they're responsible for completing it. And everybody can see all of the updates that happen for each of these tasks. Um, You can comment on those tasks in real time. And it's just so much more organized to be able to see what everybody's doing, how are they going, where are the issues. And you can also see every time somebody does work on this task, it goes into your inbox and you can see that and you can keep it updated. You know, you just go into your inbox and you just scroll through here and I'm gonna blur all of this obviously. Um, but this is stuff happening, work happening, and I can go in and observe it. And obviously if this was done through email, I would have no idea what my team was doing. So super important, Asana, Slack, and I cannot tell you how many hundreds of times more efficient it is using these two pieces of free software versus trying to do it through email or, or whatever else. I suppose I couldn't talk about software without mentioning Seller Central. I try not to log in very often at all. Um, I'll just be checking, you know, this sort of main graph. And if any problems come up where I need to do stuff, then I'll hop in. But otherwise I'm not looking at Seller Central. What I'm actually using to look at profits and sort of get information about my business and insights more so right now is Sellerboard. Now this software is really cool. It doesn't have much of a wrap. It's not, you know, one of the biggest or oldest ones around, Um, but I am really enjoying it. So I do recommend you guys check it out. I'll put a link in the description down below I think I can get you like an extra long free trial or something like that. Check it out. One of the best things about it is it's cheap. A lot of the software, like I've been using Celix as well. Celix is really expensive. Most of the other ones are really expensive, but yeah, this one starts at like $19 a month. So it's just, it's, it's good value. What I like about it is it has so much information that a lot of other software doesn't. They actually pull the entire, um, everything out of Amazon. Whereas a lot of other professional software doesn't actually talk to you about or it doesn't tell you the exact refunds, for example. And so you have to go and figure them out yourself afterwards. And just this, all of this other sort of stuff, it's really accurate and I really like it. So that's Sellboard, highly recommend it. The only other thing is, right, so file collaboration. I use Google Drive, Google Docs. Um, I used to use Excel and Word. We're trying to go away from that just because again, there's so much free cloud software where you can just like, be instantly communicating and instantly collaborating. So Google Docs is really good for that because you can add comments to files and you know you can make procedures and then if somebody changes it, there's no way that there are two different versions or anything else like that. So Asana, Slack, Google Drive, they're all free. 
Oh, actually, I pay for Google Drive, but it's like 100 bucks a year or something. Um, and then Sellboard is super cheap, super good value software. All right, so that's uh, software, that's tools. Let's talk about team. How did I get to the spot where I'm at, where I don't have to work very much and I still make a lot of money through Amazon. Okay, let's talk about people. Who have I got on my team? And I'm just reading off notes here, so bear with me. So first up and most importantly is uh, Michael, my manager. So that's my mini me, <laughs> I would like to say. So, I mean, somebody asks like, why do you have a full-time manager working for you? He essentially does the stuff that I, as a business owner, would otherwise be doing. Um, so that means that means product launches, that means all the decision making that has to happen, you know, in the background to get stuff done. And when stuff goes wrong on Amazon, or, you know, there's problems with listings or product quality issues with suppliers, that's the stuff that if he wasn't doing it, I would be doing it. Um, this could also be a partner. So I think in a lot of cases where other people have pretty big businesses and their business is like passive, it's because there's some sort of partner in the background um, or in the foreground maybe doing that work for them. Because the fact is that if you, I mean, if you're running an Amazon business, you know that there is work to do. Um, so somebody has to do it, whether it's you or whether it's somebody else. I think alternatively, an alternative um, sort of option that I thought about doing but didn't go down that pathway would be to instead of hiring either a partner level or a manager level, would just be hiring you know assistants or more lower level um, type VAs. I think you could do that as well and have a couple more VAs, but just understand that there are a lot of decisions that need to be made because not everything runs like clockwork all the time. And so when it, something goes wrong, that's when somebody needs to step up and be able to make that decision. Um, and understand as well, you know, I've found this anyways, that generally you get what you pay for. Um, in almost all cases, like if someone is an absolute bargain, there's normally a reason for it. Or if you feel somebody's really expensive, there's probably a reason for that as well. Um, so that's Michael, that's the manager and then assistant. So we have one full-time angel and she, angel really is my angel, but she works, she pretty much works only part-time on Amazon and she actually works the other half of the time for me on this YouTube side. Um, so not full-time assistant for Amazon, half, half an assistant. So what sort of duties is that? That's a lot of the operational stuff. That's anything from talking to suppliers. That's like, you know, checking inspection reports, dealing with shipments um, on Amazon and with suppliers, freight related stuff, tracking products, tracking competitors, doing a lot of research. And it looks like it's raining. I might have to go inside. And one thing about Grenada, there is a lot of rain shouts. So let's go inside. So that was, that was Angel, that's the assistant side of things. It's a lot of this just miscellaneous stuff. Um, next is customer service. I recommend hiring that out as one of the very first things to do. So that is just an hourly rate job. It's not gonna be a full-time job. You just need somebody who can do probably a couple of hours a week um, of customer service. And for us, actually, that's a lot more. It's more like 20 hours a week, something like that, 15, 20. Um, and then you have other small stuff, bookkeeping, graphics design, uh, that stuff I recommend just contracting out. Like you don't need to bring somebody in house because it's well, again, like the customer service, there isn't that much to do. You might need some sometimes and then for a while you won't need anything. Um, so I think a common question here is how many people do you actually need to hire? So I'm gonna give my personal experience here, but my business does a bit over 2 million a year on Amazon. And I'd say for a business of that size, you know, roughly 2 million or a couple of million a year, two and a half to three people, including yourself or including somebody who is that sort of partner, owner, manager type level, um, working, you know, roughly full time. I think that varies a lot though. Now, we personally, or our business, we sell products that are a lot lower volume. And, and the thing is that every product that you launch on Amazon has a pretty fixed amount of time that you have to spend, you know, researching it, developing it with your supplier, arranging all of the shipments, doing the launch process, uh, creating the listing as well, sorry, all of those sorts of things, whether your product is gonna sell 10K a month or 5K a month or 50K a month or 100K a month, it kind of takes the same amount of time. Uh, what changes a lot is the amount of money that you need to put into that product. So we've gone on the lower end. So most of our products sell in the five to 10K a month range. So I think, honestly, you could probably run or grow up to you know $10 million a year. Don't quote me on this, but with close to the same amount of people that we have. So say three to four, a team of three to four people working roughly full-time equivalent, um, I think you could get to 10 million, 10 million a year. If you're launching those big products 
that again take more money and less of your time um, and, and most of that legwork most of that time and most of that two and a half to four people that I talked about that legwork is stuff that assistants can do you don't need to do most of that um, so the next question is when do you think you should hire your first assistant or when did when did I hire my first assistant um, it's you should probably do it earlier than you probably feel you should do it it only costs you know like four to five dollars an hour you can pay more if you want to but you don't have to you can get great employees for that price range and so the way that I like to think about it is think about the ratio between how much your aspirational hourly rate your hourly income rate that you want to be earning so let's say it's a hundred dollars what's the ratio between that rate and the amount it'll cost you to actually hire somebody to do the work for you so if your aspirational hourly rate is $100 and you can hire somebody for $5 per hour, you are 20 times better off hiring an assistant to do that work for you than if you did it yourself. It, the ratios really add up um, and really make sense for you to start hiring stuff out early. But um, what I found with that is that you have to understand what you're doing first. So you can't, you shouldn't hire out, outsource PPC if you don't understand how to do Amazon PPC because you don't know whether they're going to do a good job and you have no way of managing them and you have no way of ensuring that they get the right outcome for your business. So you do it first, understand the process that could apply to shipments, to everything else, to customer service, write a procedure, then you can get somebody else to do that and then you can make use of that, again, that ratio, that 20 times ratio between what, you're, what you want to be earning and what they actually earn. One other thing is getting family involved. I know quite a few people actually do this. They bring family or friends or acquaintances into their business, maybe customer service or something if you know they're gonna like it, but I just think you wanna keep, keep a distance between work and family and friends. Long-term, you're better off learning how to outsource these things properly, how to find good people to do the work for you because maybe, you know, maybe it, it doesn't go that well, maybe you need to fire them at some stage. Um, or maybe you're making somebody that you love do a job that realistically they shouldn't be doing. So that's why I'm, I'm sort of against that idea. Um, that's really it on team management. The next thing I had was payments. So how do I get paid from Amazon? And that's really simple. I have a whole video about this. Uh, I'll put that up here, but I just use a company called World First. TransferWise is an equally good alternative. Um, you just need somebody that will open up a local bank account in whatever country you want to sell on Amazon. So World First, they deal with everything. Uh, it's really not an issue. It's not something that you should be thinking about um, or, or worrying about. Bunch of other questions now. How do I receive samples? That's a good question. I don't. Um, the last time I received samples from my suppliers, I think it was two years ago. Uh, so it was a while ago now. Now, the thing is you can do it and you, if you're starting out and you have a situation like this where you're traveling, you need to receive samples. So just get an address of some sort where you can receive them from China and it might be a bit more expensive wherever you are versus being you know, back home, but suck it up. Samples don't cost that much in, you know, in the big picture of things. So get the samples. Um, if I were to receive them, I would be, you know, this is an Airbnb, it has an address, I would just ship them to the Airbnb address. Somebody in my business looks at samples, so we do have someone checking them. So don't, don't think that I'm skipping out on that step. Does it get lonely running a business like this? Like you've seen this place, you know, I'm in here by myself. Does it get lonely? Yes, actually it does. And that's definitely a challenge that you should understand if you go down the online business route. And I've had so many comments from, from you guys. And I know that, you know, maybe it's just me because I'm an introvert, but I think online business attracts introverted people because that was one of the things that got me into it in the first place was I didn't need to go to an office. I didn't need to, talk to people that I don't like talking to anyway, so I can just do it from my computer. I always, when I was growing up, I always spent lots of time in front of a computer anyway, so I was used to that environment. Um, but keep in mind that, you know, you'll take it to an extreme. You need to spend a lot of time in front of the computer by yourself working to get this business off the ground. Um, once, once it's off the ground, it doesn't take that much time, but that process does. So definitely um, finding people that you can work around, I think is absolutely key. The best situation that I found myself in was actually living with somebody else who had an online business. It wasn't an Amazon business, but we would, we would work on our own businesses together and then we would go and discuss ideas and problems and having somebody like that, who's ideally a good friend as well, uh, really just makes it really, really great. Digital nomads as well, definitely like congregate together. So if you want to travel to Asia or South America or something like that, there are particular hotspots where you're able to find lots of people doing something very similar to what you're doing. So 
that cannot be an issue. You can go work in a co-working space or just find people like, you know, in Medellin, you go into any cafe in El Poblado and you'll just see like white people who are digital nomads working in cafes. So you can find them if you want to. Um, my word of caution and the issue that I had with that is that most digital nomads who associate with that term, they're not, they're not really business minded. They might not be, even be entrepreneurs. They might, you know, just be freelancing or something like that. And it's a different mindset and it's a different sort of, I don't want to say like level, but it's different priorities. And so just be careful who it is that you're finding to spend time around. I do recommend that you try and not just completely work by yourself, but just be aware that, you know, you are the product of the five people you spend the most time with. So are those other nomads or other people that you start working around, are they aspiring to be what you're aspiring to be? Just keep that in mind. Next one, how do I talk to and communicate with suppliers? Um, so again, I don't have to do that much anymore, um, but if you are doing that, I recommend using WeChat as soon as possible. Um, I've only just started using that recently, or our, our team has, it's much better than Skype, and Skype is much better than email, and email is probably much better than like using Alibaba. So as much as possible, you wanna get them on real-time communication platforms. And WeChat, the Chinese use it all the time, so that will get you the fastest responses. Um, just on that, I actually used to enjoy getting to know my suppliers a lot. That was one of the one of my favorite things about when I was starting this business. And I was just, you know, I was launching my own brands and my own products, and it was really fun. Particularly, this is kind of weird, I don't know if it makes sense, but with the time difference, when I was in Colombia, I just remember all of these either really late nights or early mornings, and I would just be on Skype talking to them you know, chatting to them, getting to know them, and just thinking that, holy crap, like, what am I doing here in South America, creating this brand of my own for these products that I'm gonna sell in the US, which I've never been to, and yeah, talking to people halfway around the world in different time zones. So I actually really enjoyed that aspect. Um, but anyway, I recommend WeChat as soon as possible, ASAP get the communication onto there, because you'll just get much better responsiveness. Um, I, I'm also thinking about going to China in April of next year, so 2020, for the Canton Fair, and I would like to revisit those suppliers because we've had them for years now um, and hopefully build up those relationships. So that's something that I'm thinking about doing. Uh, what about holidays over the years? So how do I actually like do holidays or travel with this sort of you know day-to-day -day work environment that you've seen? So I prefer to do things in sprints. So I will like work, I'll set like a pretty big goal for the month. Normally I go in, in month increments. I'll get that done and then I will try and disconnect and I'll turn off the internet for a week or something or I'll at least drop the hours right down. So if you look on my toggle, my hours worked, it sort of varies a lot and goes up and down. And I just find that I work better like that. I, I struggle to sort of do things steady, steady the whole time and I really like to escape and go for holidays. So here's an important question. Should you start an Amazon business and become a digital nomad at the same time? I actually recommend against this um, because, you know, life is great now. I don't have to do much work. I earn a lot of money with Amazon. Uh, but at the start, it takes a lot of grunt work, of grinding and figuring things out. And you need to be, you need to be intelligent about it. You need to be working smartly um, and, and to do that for an extended period of time. So it depends, again, on what your priorities are. And again, based on the five people that you spend your time with, that's who you will become. So just work out what your priorities are. How big of a business do you want to grow? What sort of income level do you need? And if it's going to be up there, if it's going to be you know six figures or multiple six figures, I would recommend staying at least staying in the same spot for six to twelve months to get your business up and running, get it off the ground, and then you can start to relax, um, go traveling, do all that sort of stuff. So I mean, for me, when I I moved to Colombia at the same time as I started my business, uh, but. Once I got there, I stayed there for a six month period and I didn't really travel, I didn't really move very much. So I was there and I was focused on growing my business rather than just traveling around and enjoying you know, the nomad life. The reason why is it's just much, much easier to focus and get stuff done when you don't have to worry about visas, you don't have to worry about immigration, you don't have to worry about booking hotels, uh, you don't have to worry about finding Wi-Fi or reliable internet, all that sort of stuff. Just like forget about it for now and focus on your business. Um, one last thing, where did I hire my team members? Where did I get them from? So first of all, Upwork is the one that I've had the best experiences with overall, upwork.com. Um, that's for ongoing contractors that you wanna keep working with. For single, simple stuff like packaging designs, logos that you just need something done once, um, fiverr.com is probably the best one for that because it's very quick, it's very easy. 
you will get what you pay for on Fiverr, but if you don't need much, that's fine. And you'll be able to pay $20 or something for a logo. Uh, I've also used onlinejobs.ph, but to be honest, I've had better experiences using Upwork than with online jobs. And online jobs is mainly for full-time Filipino workers. So it's a bit more of a, a narrow specialization. And for the long term, like I found uh, Michael, the, my manager through Reddit, actually, we were just, you know, posting on Reddit and then we started exchanging messages. So what I want to say from that is don't be afraid to look outside the box a little bit. You don't have to hire, hire people through these online job platforms. You can do it the old school way, which is to just make genuine connections with people uh, and then, you know, offer them business opportunities that way. And that is pretty much how I manage my seven figure Amazon FBA business. That's work, that's travel, that's routines, uh, that's team management. That's pretty much everything. It's pretty crazy that for me, this is work. This is not what it looked like for me for most of my life. Most of my life was in an office in a really remote place where I had to fly to get there and it was just terrible and I hated it. And so I'm kind of in awe of the fact that in a very short period of time, I've been able to build up this completely new environment, completely new space, these structures, these routines, all this. And I get to work not very much and I get to get paid a lot of money. So, you know, and that's all thanks to Amazon. So I'm grateful for that. And I hope that you got some insight into what this actually looks like. Again, I didn't glamorize this at all. Um, you've literally seen me working in an attic today <laughs> and that's what it's really like a lot of the time. I could maybe do another video uh, on the boat to show you what that is like, but you learn, leave me a comment down below if you want to see something further or you want to, or you had some more questions as a result of this video and I'll try and answer them in the next one. So I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video.